I work with Imperfect Produce. I'm an outreach representative, um, so my job is to spread the word about food waste, about what Imperfect is doing to fight food waste, and how we as individuals can play a big part in that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, help yourself. So, like I was just saying, why are we here? We're going to talk a lot about food waste today because the fact is 40% of food in the U.S. goes uneaten. So this is just a crazy number. <laughs> um, and so Imperfect focuses on reducing that number. So you can obviously guess that that food that's going uneaten has a serious impacts um, due to all the resources that we're putting into growing and transporting and selling this food. So that actually accounts for 25% of the U.S. water use. 31% uh, of our cropland is put into growing this food that's never eaten. 33 million cars worth of greenhouse gases are released every year. Um, making this food, transporting it, you know, selling it, all sorts of machinery that goes into um, harvesting it, 30% of our fertilizers, and it, disposing of it takes up 21% of our landfill volume. So we're going to focus a little more on that last one, the landfills. What exactly is in our landfills? Obviously, a lot of things you'd expect. A lot of things that could be recycled or composted, but um, <coughs> as you can see the single largest contributor is food. So 21% of our landfills are filled with food. And a lot of people think that's sort of <coughs> not a big deal because it's biodegradable, it will break oh, down, the uh, volume that it's occupying will no longer be an issue, and it will return nutrients to the soil, but you can come on in if, you want, if you're interested. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, that's not actually the case. <coughs> so everyone probably saw my sign out there, but if anyone didn't already see the answer to this, does anyone have a guess as to how long it would take a head of lettuce to compose, decompose in a landfill? A month. A month. 60 days. 60 days. That's what I thought, too. When I first saw this, um, I said three months. But... It's 25 what? years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So our idea of how fast it would decompose is from experience, right? If you've ever composted, you know that organic matter breaks down really quickly in the right environment. If you've ever even just like left lettuce in your fridge for two months, you'll know that it will start to really decompose. But in landfills, the thing is that the environment is really different. So there's no oxygen present. Um, this is because, you know, food is buried under a mountain of trash. There's no aeration, no airflow, <coughs> and so there's no oxygen. And decomposition um, in its sort of purest, most efficient form has oxygen present and is an environment where there's lots of nutrients and, you know, you, there's lots of microorganisms and bacteria that help it decompose, like a compost pile or worms or, you know, all sorts of different stuff. And that's why that process is so efficient and so quick. But in landfills, without oxygen and without, you know, any sort of um, hospitable environment for microorganisms and things, this food is decomposing extremely slowly. So if you imagine a head of lettuce taking 25 years, anything that's more substantial, think about like a squash or something, is going to take a really long time to decompose. Yeah, and so when things are breaking down in a compost pile, they're a gas that's produced, which is a healthy gas for this um, decomposition process. But in landfills, since there's no oxygen present, this carbon is uh, binding with hydrogen and making methane instead. And it turns out that methane is 20 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And food rotting in landfills accounts for 18% of our annual methane emissions. Wow. So the fact that all of this food is not only going to waste, but that it is not being disposed of in a you know, healthy way 
we're really making a big impact on our environment um, through that. Another huge factor that we always are talking about here in Southern California is water. So the amount of water that goes into growing and producing and transporting and selling food that we never consume in the U.S. is 11 trillion gallons a year, which is a really hard number to imagine. Um, <laughs> but to give you some context, that is, a, sorry, there we go, enough, um, enough water to satisfy the household usage of 500 million Americans, which is one and a half times our nation's population. So that's the amount of water we're wasting when we throw away food. Um, for a more visual representation, this one's kind of fun. <laughs> if we had a pool the size of the state of Florida, this amount of water would fill it with one foot of water. So, pretty significant. Um, and it's not only resources and pollution that is caused by wasting all this food, it also is a really expensive thing. Um, so we're investing all of this money in these resources in the time of you know, the labor um, of the farmers and tra people transporting it, people selling it, um, and you know, us as consumers who buy it and then don't, don't use this food. So 162 to $218 billion a year wasted on, um, on food that we're never consuming. And of course, a huge loss of nutrition. So 141 trillion calories every year that could have nourished people. Again, a trillion, really difficult to imagine, but um, this in, put it in context. If we were to reduce our losses by less than a third, we'd be able to feed 50 million Americans that would satisfy their diets. And current estimates show that there's about 42.1 million food insecure Americans. So we could end hunger <laughs> if we were to recover all of this waste and get it to you know, people who need it and um, be able to sell it for very cheap or you know, donate it. However we need to do, just re reducing the waste is the way to do it. Um, So we're going to look next at where exactly this food waste is taking place in the food industry. This is a breakdown of um, all the different sectors of the food industry and how much is being wasted in each environment. As you can see, the largest contributor is in homes. So this is actually really empowering for us, is knowing that as individuals, the largest amount of food waste is extremely preventable. So you can make all sorts of changes in your daily life, in the way that you use your food, the way that you store your food, um, how much you're buying, being really conscious of only buying what you need and what you are going to use, and making sure you're using leftovers as well. Um, so that's pretty significant. And then the next one is consumer-facing businesses. So they're about even 43% in homes, 40% in consumer-facing businesses. And this is anything um, from supermarkets and grocery stores to restaurants and um, even the government. So the largest contributor here is supermarkets and grocery stores. And this is often because we have this sort of culture of abundance. We like to see way more than we would ever buy displayed at the grocery store, you know, we see these displays with like hundreds and hundreds of oranges and there's no way they're going to all be purchased before they go bad, um, but for some reason our culture likes to see all of the, that there as available and, um, you know, possible. So a lot of this produce and even other food items, things that have best buy instead of use by dates, where best buy indicates quality, <coughs> use by indicates safety, um, but stores will still throw out things when they're past their best buy date, even though they're still perfectly good to eat. And the thing that's happening with this is all this food is still, you know, really quite good to eat in almost, you know, 99% of cases, but these um, businesses 
are afraid that if they were to donate it or let their employees take it home, they could be liable if someone were to get sick. ill. Exactly. Um, and that's actually not true. So there was a law passed in 1996, the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Food Donation Act, that protects um, stores and businesses from being liable if someone gets ill off of donated food. So they can actually donate this stuff and give it to people who need it and not throw it in their dumpsters um, without fear of, you know, being held liable. But most, uh, most stores don't know this or aren't acting on it. So again, this is something we can all really do as individuals is, you know, talk to the managers at your local grocery store, ask them what they're doing with the food that they can't sell anymore, see if you can help them organize um, a way to be donating it or a way to be selling it for really, really cheap. You know, there's all sorts of, um, of things we can do here. So that's also exciting and empowering. The next largest one is 16% on farms. And, and this is what imperfect produce focuses on. So you might be wondering, why is produce going to waste on farms? Well, a lot of it just doesn't fit the bill for what we expect produce to look like. And um, we've got some examples of very imperfect produce. So is anyone that a gardener, growing your own stuff, have like citrus plants or anything, trees? I used to. You used to? Did you get some funky looking stuff? Yes. Yeah, so that's just how it naturally, you know, occurs. You might get oranges that have really um, cool, in my opinion, designs on their, on their skins, or peppers that are totally misshapen, that are still going to taste great, eggplants with some extra appendages. <laughs> Um, or carrots that, you know, grow all crooked and they just grow like roots do. <laughs> that's what carrots are. Lovers. Yeah. Carrots <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> with their lovers. Wow. Uh, together forever. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so, all of this food has something in common. Anyone that guess? Um, not perfect. <laughs> yes, exactly. And because they're not perfect, they would be thrown away. So that's what farmers are currently doing with this ugly produce is there is not really an incentive for them to do anything else with it. They have no market. Um, you know, no one wants to buy this ugly produce, so it ends up in landfills. And that is what imperfect produce was founded around. So we were launched in 2015 with the uh, mission to redefine beauty in produce because all fruits and veggies deserve to be loved. Mm -hmm. And we, um, our founders, you know, they thought about how people really do want to eat healthy, but it can be very expensive to get produce from grocery stores. Yet. <laughs> The amount of produce that's thrown out on farms is six billion pounds a year of really good, high quality, tasty, nutritious produce um, that's thrown out just because it doesn't meet our cosmetic standards for size, shape, or colors, whatever. So that's actually 20% of the food we grow for human consumption heading straight for the landfill. And in order to combat this, our three lovely farm, uh, founders <laughs> in our warehouse in San Francisco um, got together, started a crowdfunding campaign in August of 2015, and launched Imperfect in San Francisco. They established our first warehouse in Emeryville um, and started partnering with local farmers to take any produce that they couldn't sell to grocery stores and redirect it and sell it for significantly cheaper get it into people's homes. I remember seeing a story on the newspaper. Nice! Yeah, yeah we've been featured on a lot of uh, different, um, there are a lot of different mediums. And most recently, I think, uh, on the radio, <laughs> there was a, a big like story about us, and 
National Geographic did a big story about food waste and we featured imperfect produce, which was exciting. Um, so yeah, we were from the beginning founded on some core principles, as I mentioned. We wanted to make it affordable, so make food accessible to more people, good produce. Um, we charge 30 to 50% less than grocery store prices for our ugly produce. And we also offer uh, assistance for low-income families and individuals so that we can get good produce out to everyone who wants it and everyone who needs it. We make our boxes totally customizable so that our customers get to pick the fruits and veggies they get. Um, this is another way we're reducing waste by not just sending you whatever we have because some yeah. people don't like it. <laughs> exactly. And we waste it. Yeah, exactly. So we want our customers to only get what they want and only get how much they need. Um, and so we offer the option to customize and our you know, our options are pretty extensive. It's all seasonal produce. Um, and we make it super convenient so that it's you know delivered right to um, to people's homes every week or every other week and make it easy for our customers to skip deliveries if they're out of town. So again, reducing food waste, making sure no one's getting a delivery when they don't need it. If they're not home, it's just going to sit on their porch for a week and rot. Um, we want to make sure that that never happens. And it's all really healthy and delicious and it's all, you know, tastes just as good as what you'd find in the grocery store. Um, and since we partner directly with farmers, it's all extremely fresh as well. And, of course, our main mission coming back to fighting food waste. So everything in the boxes we sent out would otherwise have gone to waste. They're, we're not, um, you know, diverting this from having gone to food banks. We're not taking food that farmers were otherwise going to sell to animal feedlots. This is stuff that they had no market for before they partnered with Imperfect mm -hmm. and that they would have um, thrown into landfills. So currently, Imperfect customers save about 450,000 pounds of produce every week. Wow. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. And we, yeah, that number just like keeps going up. It surprises me. It's like every month we hear that it's even more. So that's really exciting. Um, and that has huge impacts. So as I said, 450,000 pounds a week since we started about two and a half years ago. We've recovered over 13 million pounds of produce from ending up in landfills. The drop in the bucket, <laughs> as we saw earlier with the 6 billion pounds going to waste every year, but we're getting somewhere. Um, and it's definitely gaining momentum. And as we were talking about earlier, all the resources that go into growing this food. So by making sure that it's not um, going to waste, we are also making sure that the water that was used to grow it isn't going to waste mm -hmm. and we are preventing uh, methane emissions that would have occurred had this food been decomposing in landfills. Mm -hmm. We're also supporting our farmers. So as I was saying, this <coughs> is produce they had no market for before, they could not turn a profit on, but they're growing anyways because that's how nature works. <laughs> you, do do you, I'm sorry, do you di no? differentiate between organic and uh, conventional? Yes. Yep. And probably the organic ones are less, uh, less wasteful, right? Because you find, you expect more imperfections from organic. And I'm sure the customers are yeah. more flexible, correct? Customers of organic. I think it really depends on the market. Um, uh -huh. um, you know, certain customers and um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say, but our, we do partner with both organic okay. and conventional farmers and um, it's, I mean, it's all, yeah, it's all stuff that would have been wasted otherwise. And, and if I may observe, uh, it looks like people who consume organic, they are less picky and, you know, mm -hmm. they find a bug. A normal person says, ah, a bug, it's all a bug, put it somewhere else. And it's yeah, <laughs> it's, I, I think it probably depends on, um, the motivation behind each consumer's choice to eat organic. So, you know, there's different approaches, different reasons that people are eating organic and, and some, yeah, might be more disposed to, you know, being okay with ugly fruit, whereas others may not. Um, and by your, by your experience and observations, uh, how much of, of the organic uh, uh, area goes to waste? 
I'm, I'm supposed much less than 40%, right? I don't know, actually, specifically statistics on organic versus conventional. Um, I think that across the board, the statistic that 20% of what we grow for human consumption is going to waste is including organic and conventional farms. I think the, the study, you know, is, is, um, encapsulates both. It so would be interesting sure. to see the difference. It would, definitely. It, it, it would, uh, it, it's very helpful for so many reasons. Yeah. Uh, I have to go into that. Totally. Yeah. Um, Can I ask something? Yes, please. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you a similar question. Um, what's the percentage of GMO products that might look mutation, mm -hmm. and that's why some of the products come out looking different, mm -hmm. compared to the organic? Which one? Which, in which case do we get more waste? Mm. Oh, in which I, case, you know, the the, uh, the food comes out looking strange. Right. Yeah. You know, I think that more often than not, you'll find um, that it's really just how things are naturally growing. So even organic produce is going to grow looking um, a little wonky and. That's just sort of natural variation. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about all of the variation among the people in this room and how we all look different. That's just like our produce. And we somehow expect it to all be, you know, this one shape and size nice and color. Standard. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I think that it's, it's more natural variation. And, you know, as far as our produce goes, we... Um, it's hard to certify conventional produce as non-GMO. There's not really a standard for that yet in this country, but um, or in order to be certified organic, the seeds must not be genetically modified. So if you are interested in getting produce from us and are worried about um, genetic modification, mm -hmm. organic is definitely the way to go, and you'll be guaranteed not to have any GMOs um, in your box. But, yeah. Thank you for your questions. Please okay. let me know if you have any questions while I'm going, and we can do more at the end. I really appreciate that. Um, where was that? Access to food. Yes. As I was saying, low-cost box options, so we make it affordable. We also partner with um, food banks in every city that we work in, so that we are able to donate food um, every week. Any surplus that we have, we donate to people in need. So in LA, it's about three to four thousand pounds every week donated. Nice. Yeah. <coughs> so, as you were asking, what does our produce actually look like? Oftentimes, it's not even that ugly. So, the standards that we have are a little ridiculous. Does anyone have a guess as to why these oranges would have ended up in the landfill? Too small. I remember. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So these are too small. So the this variety of orange is supposed to be between one and three quarters and two and a quarter inches in diameter. And if it's outside of that range, they throw it away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which yeah is pointless and um, just really you know unnecessary. It also has some discoloration. You can see little green spots on these oranges as well. So. This is oftentimes the sort of stuff that we are getting. Um, our most common feedback from new customers is actually that our produce doesn't look weird at all. And they were expecting it all to be super wonky like those VIPs you saw, but most of it looks pretty normal. Um, similarly, these pears, you can see minor scarring. That's why these ones would have been thrown out. Um, Funny, funnily enough, there have actually been studies that show that fruit with scarring is sweeter than the fruit without scarring. So the perfect stuff might not even taste as good. You know, it's, it's funny how they throw away the fruit because it has minor blemishes, but on the same token, you have so many people who just are afraid to show their blemishes. You know, right. they have to wear makeup, <laughs> you know, they try to be perfect with the injections and stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting. Oh yeah, I mean, it's this is totally a product of our very, like, superficial, really just um, cosmetically oriented society. The fact that we think for some reason perfect is better and is necessary um, where you know that's, that's just not true right <laughs> and the natural variation is 
natural. Yeah. It's exactly that, and we should embrace it, and we should not be, you know, casting it aside. We partnered with various supermarkets to put this produce um, on the shelves, and then we also partnered with processors to turn this produce into other things. At this point, we're focusing almost exclusively on home delivery. And we're doing that because we've found it to be the most efficient and effective way to save this produce from going to waste um, and get it to you know people who want it. So we partner directly with the farmers, as I said before, um, and make sure that we're getting things you know that are uh, still really high quality as far as flavor and um, yeah quality goes, but that our you know, things that they wouldn't have had a market for before. And it all goes to our warehouses. We have a warehouse in each city that we serve. Um, and this is where we pack our boxes according to what each customer has ordered. And then they're delivered to the houses and we um, help our customers to understand how to store their food properly. We also send out a recipe with every box for some inspiration. We like to focus on some of our more um, unique items that people may not have cooked with before. We also often um, feature things like how to use beet greens or how to use squash seeds, parts of the plant that we um, often throw out, that we often think, as, think of as sort of waste, um, but that are still edible and still taste great. So that's very fun. And we've been growing pretty rapidly. So this fall we expanded to Seattle and Chicago. Um, we are now in five cities, so Los Angeles, of course. And, um, we were founded in San Francisco, as I said, so we do the whole bay, and then also Portland, Oregon is our fifth city. So, what can we all do together? We've talked about this a little bit so far. Let's just sum it up. And first and foremost, eating ugly. You can start getting uh, produce deliveries through Imperfect and, you know, diverting this produce from ending up in landfills. Um, when you're out eating, especially at like a dining facility or a buffet, making sure that you're being mindful of your portion sizes, only taking exactly what you're going to eat so that you don't end up throwing things away at the end. And if you do end up having leftovers, you just take home containers so that you um, can eat it later. If you ever have extra food at home that is still good to eat, you can donate it and, as I mentioned, facilitate donations. Um, at your local grocery stores or your local restaurants, ask them what they do with any food that they have left over. Make sure you're storing your food properly, and if you can, compost your food scraps. Um, and this is actually a really cool thing. This quarter, our uh, donation partner is LA Compost. So they are a really awesome nonprofit in LA that. Um, is built around, you know, they realize that as we live in a big city, a lot of people don't have the capacity to compost at home. A lot of people don't have yards or enough space. And so what LA Compost does is they offer a number of sites around the city where you can drop off your food scraps and they will compost it and then use that compost in community gardens. So it's a pretty beautiful thing and we are um, yeah, we're partnering with them this quarter. And of course, food waste evangelism. So spread the word, talk to people about this stuff, anything you learned here today, anything you know from your own experience, other parts of your life, um, just bring it up and, and get people thinking about it. And you know, as, as we talked about, the largest amount of waste happens in homes. So as individuals, we really do have power here and we can, um, we can spread this word. And so all in all, we can do something. Thank you all. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's really wow. great with what you guys are doing. Thank you. Yeah. There's only one more question. How much of uh, what you take in goes to waste? How much of what we take in? So well, do, you, do you find distribution for everything? Yeah, so we, any surplus that we have, we do um, donate, as I was mentioning. Okay, so whatever. And, okay. Yeah. And if there is ever, you know, if we end up getting something that in transit has gone bad, or um, if there's ever, you know, an item that we just, like, can't donate for some reason, we, we compost. Perfect. So, yeah. 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 We do try to be mindful of that. And um, 
just so you all know, if anyone is interested in joining Imperfect, we have our booth over that way, our oh, table, right. and um, we've got you know more information there, and we would be happy to help you get set up with an account. We are doing a discount for this event as a sort of thank you for having us here. So if you come sign up with us, you'll get half off your first box. Yes. You can try us out and join the Imperfect family. That is awesome. <laughs> wow. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have any more questions? We have something like in Canada. We don't have I'm anything in Canada. Oh, yeah, okay. not yet. Not but yet. Um, okay. that would be yeah, that would be an interesting place to expand to. <laughs> yeah. We're still very young, is the thing. Um, we're only like two and a half years old, so um, it's possible. Or you could start it. Start the Canadian <laughs> branch. <laughs> yeah. My kids, I have a chickens in my backyard, so sometimes. Do the waste happen in my fridge, you know? Ah. I forgot to. Right. Yeah. They, yeah, I'm sure they're the excited. Chicken, <laughs> the chicken return the eggs. Perfect. So, please. Yeah. Like, Closed yeah. cycle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Are you part of the schools uh, in any way? Um, we partner with a That's number awesome. of universities. University. Yeah, we have. Um, campus ambassadors in our outreach program, so I'm an outreach representative, but these campus ambassadors are students at universities who um, work to, you know, they'll do presentations to student groups and they will table on campus and get students thinking about it and signed up for um, getting deliveries and stuff. So. Uh, do, do you have partnership with, I know uh, Google does this, uh, or um, Microsoft uh, mm -hmm. in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. they're taking in this kind of food analysis view with you guys. No, I don't think that it is with us, but that's really cool. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, our one of our founders actually, before working with or before founding Imperfect, was working with the Food Recovery Network, mm -hmm. which is a nonprofit that focuses on recovering leftover food from um, college dining facilities. And so they all of this prepared food that just goes to waste, they um, will you know recover it and donate it to uh, food banks or homeless shelters, whatever. Wow. You know, I've seen this, these news for like 40 years, you know, that we, we waste 40 percent. Yeah. It doesn't change. Right. Okay? So I, yeah. I think I'm developing a program to change that. Nice. <laughs> we can develop a, um, a non-profit and, and, and uh, uh, it includes an app to monitor everything you do, <laughs> the good and the bad, uh, to change it. So you monitor your every idea, every day's activities. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to, to transform a negative pattern of behavior, mm -hmm. of thought, of uh, uh, relationships, uh, whatever. Right, anyway, and that's a very good thing to do. Monitor your waste. Attention, yeah. everyone. There will be a cooking class in the community room with Tim Martinez starting in about two minutes. <laughs> and the thing Please is, go to the community room. That's the big room. This goes to a database where you run statistics, you, you, run, um, you run charts mm -hmm. that monitor your activities, uh, be it controlling a negative uh, like an addiction, mm -hmm. an obsession, or even a, um, a psychosis. Right. So you, you keep monitoring through the, through the weeks, through the months, through mm -hmm. the years, and with support, we have a network of support. Right. So this is great. Yeah. Because for example, we have a big drought in New York. Okay? Mm -hmm. I walk, I drive around and I see trees and, 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 and uh, trees dying of thirst. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is create a, a, an inventory of all the trees and all the plants around the, the city and all the spaces where you can plant a tree and, and put that on a database and um, get, get virtual angels to, ma to take care of those areas, water them uh, and plant them, water them. N don't need a single space without a tree available. Yeah, cool. And also, now that you talk about uh, no, no waste, how much of you, what you do, uh, have you considered making it into juice? Personally? Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, no, the company, selling, selling juice? Yeah, so we, um, we do partner with some smaller like juicing companies, mm -hmm. and the thing is that right now, with the way that our um, partnerships are with our, our farmers and the fact that it's all seasonal produce, it's not... 100% reliable that we're going to have every item every week, right? So we, um, as far as being able to sell this stuff 
you know, we don't always know if we're going to have carrots, or we don't always know that we're going to have citrus. So we don't, um, yeah, a lot of restaurants and things can't use our service because they need sort of a reliable uh, supply. But smaller facilities, smaller juicing companies are some have been um, able to get deliveries from us and just sort of adapt whatever they order based on what we have available. So there is that possibility as well. Um, but we, yeah, we partner with some processing facilities like um, LA Kitchen is one of our biggest partners in this area. I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but they are awesome. Um, yeah, they're a nonprofit in downtown LA, and they are structured to help. Um, former prisoners with re-entry into society.